What do leaders do? They tell people what to do. They march somewhere. They put people in lines. Go in front of a line. Take charge of something. Do you know someone who is a leader? Yes, George Washington. No. My teacher. The principal. Tom Brady. I guess a teacher is a leader because a teacher tells us what to do. Are you a leader? Why or why not? <laughs> no, I am not the best on the basketball team. Yes, I'm a door holder. No. No, I'm just a kid. Yes, I'm a line leader. These are all real answers I heard when asking children these questions. Leadership has to be nurtured, yet leadership is not taught in most elementary schools. And most children are never truly exposed to what it means to be a leader. As someone who has studied and researched leadership theories, I believe that in order to develop future leaders, we need to start introducing leadership to children as early as preschool and kindergarten. There is both an opportunity and responsibility to introduce leadership at home and in classrooms. And by doing so, we can create lasting and positive change in the life of a child. We can all debate the quality of leadership in our country today. What is obvious is that every leader was once a child and children of today will become leaders of the future. If we want to develop those leaders of the future, we must be more intentional with developing leadership today. Most researchers point to age six as a critical milestone in a child's life due to that child's ability to begin to reason and their optimism about being able to master a variety of new skills and activities. The middle childhood years are also extremely important for leadership development because that is when children are setting their own goals and making independent decisions. By the time we're in our 20s, we have significantly shaped our identity, but introducing leadership to young children rather than as young adults allows us to engage in that process earlier. Retired US Navy four-star admiral William McRaven had an interesting response to the question, what is the number one national security issue in America today? If you're unfamiliar with the Admiral, he commanded the special operations forces that captured Haddam Hussein in 2003, rescued Captain Richard Phillips from the Somali pirates in 2009, and led the mission that killed Osama bin Laden in 2011. His commencement speech at the University of Texas went viral after telling graduates that if they want to change the world, they should start by making their bed. Admiral McRaven said the number one national security issue in America today is our country's K through 12 education system. A surprising but profound answer. While the education system is a topic for a different TEDx talk, Admiral McRaven's point was what and how we teach children is critical and can be transformative. I believe that every step of school is to prepare a child for the next step. Social skills, life skills, leadership development, and having the right mindset are just as important as content-based learning. My earliest experiences with leadership and how I came to understand what a leader was was by watching adults and authority figures in my life. Like most children, I simply believed leaders were adults who told other people what to do. 
Growing up, I was fortunate enough to have parents, teachers, coaches, and scout leaders who believed in me and wanted me to succeed in school. Throughout my elementary school years, I learned that there was not one specific trait, characteristic, personality, or behavior that defined a leader. And I realized that good leaders use their authority to have a positive impact on others. I aspired to be like those leaders who I looked up to. When I was in high school, I volunteered with a literacy program for at-risk students led by our local United Way. And what I saw really opened my eyes to realizing that there are many, many children that do not even have books in their own home. After distributing over 5,000 children's books and reading to thousands of children over several years and having conversations with so many, I began to realize that those children lacked more than just books. They lacked dreams and a vision of being something. They lacked hope. The kids who tugged at my heart were kids who believed a good day was food in their bellies before they went to bed. I didn't know what I could really offer, but as others did for me, I wanted to believe in them. And more importantly, to have them believe in themselves. Most children didn't have any idea what leadership was about, but perhaps as a topic, the idea of leadership could inspire and engage them to think differently. All children have strengths, gifts, and interests, and we need to help them find their thing. As Admiral McRaven suggested, what and how we teach children is critical. So I began to wonder, why isn't leadership taught in most classrooms? And the fact of the matter is that leadership is an intangible concept. It's hard to explain, and so it's often ignored or overlooked for young children. I brought up these thoughts with my academic mentor while in college, Dr. Matthew Sauchik, and he encouraged me to do more research. So I interviewed 100 children in grades kindergarten through third grade across three large local elementary schools and asked them the following questions. Do you know someone who is a leader? Who? Are leaders important? Why? What do leaders do? And are you a leader? Why or why not? Most children believed, as I initially did, that a leader was someone with a position of power and authority, rather than seeing leadership as a process involving influence, relationships, and working toward a goal. Additionally, most children did not think that they were leaders or had leadership potential because they were too small, too young, or not athletic. I did learn that Tom Brady is a good football player and a pretty good looking one at that. Using what we learned about children's mindset on leadership, Dr. Sauchik and I co-authored The Line Leader, a research-based children's leadership book to serve as a resource for parents and teachers to introduce leadership to their children and show children how they can demonstrate leadership in their daily lives. In The Line Leader, the teacher, Mr. Owl, says that there is going to be a classroom party with special leaders who will be visiting the classroom, and each of the students has to do a particular classroom job. Every student wants to be the line leader because they think that the line leader would be the best leader of all the students. The main character, Spider, delegates jobs to each of the classroom animals, but there are no more jobs left for Spider. In the end, the party celebrates everyone in the class, and they realize that Spider didn't have to have a position of authority, a classroom job to be a leader, but that you can be a leader by being humble, helping others, and inspiring them to be the best they can be. Like Spider, many children believe that they cannot be a leader because they are too young or too small. We wanted to illustrate that you do not have to be big or powerful to be a leader. Each child has a gift, and when they use it, they are leading, learning, and growing. After reading my story to children, they had a different mindset on leadership and answered my questions differently. They realized that leadership is not a competition. 
leading others and leading good lives can be life-changing. As a children's book, The Line Leader is simply a resource, but provides an opportunity to begin that conversation with children about leadership. But I would advocate that so much more needs to be done to create leadership resources for children. I believe that if we are more intentional about introducing leadership at home and in classrooms, at an early age and throughout childhood, that we will do a better job educating the whole child, empowering children, and creating a wider pathway for success as students begin high school, college, or are entering the workforce. Their future and society's future will be better if we do. Thank you.